following on from our previous tongue-in-cheek videos about 10 insignificant but really interesting things that aren't what they seem. Here are 10 more everyday things that prove your life is a lie. Amazing! Number 10. Ugly Betty wasn't really ugly. Hit ABC comedy drama Ugly Betty drew praise from media commentators for its refreshing willingness to put an unattractive character at the forefront of the show. What a positive and uplifting example Ugly Betty would set to young girls everywhere who weren't blessed with movie star good looks. There was only one flaw in the plan. It was quickly discovered that the actress who plays Ugly Betty, America Ferreira, has film star good looks and is, indeed, now a film star. It turns out that Hollywood is so superficial, it can't even bear to cast an ugly girl for an ugly part. Instead, they forced a pair of ludicrous braces, a dodgy haircut, and unflattering clothes on Ferreira, and had her masquerade as a geek. In Hollywood, image really is everything. Number 9. Bulls don't give a damn about the colour red like a rag to a bull. Have you heard that phrase? If you haven't, you're doubtless still aware, on at least some level, that the colour red apparently makes bulls go crazy. After all, that's why Spanish matadors always have red flags, right? That's why your grandfather warned you never to wear red on the farm. The belief that bulls despair the colour red is one of the most widely held myths around. And it is a myth. Want to know why? Bulls can't even see the colour red. They are colourblind as far as red is concerned, and charge because they see fabric moving. Or maybe just because they believe matadors deserve to be gored. The Discovery Channel TV show tested the myth out by varying the colour of flags waved at bulls between red, blue and white. The thing that determined how furiously the bulls charged wasn't the colour of the flag, but how much it moved. Better change that phrase to, like a rapidly moving flag to a bull. Number 8. Gimli was the tallest in the Fellowship of the Ring. It's the business of Hollywood to deceive and bedazzle us, we all know that. You'll still be slightly surprised to hear that the actor who played Gimli the Dwarf in the phenomenally successful Lord of the Ring movies, Jonathan Rhys Davis, was 6 foot 1, the tallest of all the actors who made up the Fellowship of the Ring. That's right, not only is the real life Gimli the Dwarf taller than all the Hobbits, he's also taller than Aragorn, played by the 5 foot 11 Viggo Mortensen, and the rangy wizard Gandalf, played by Ian McKellen, who is also 5 foot 11. Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings trilogy has drawn plenty of praise for its special effects, but while critics swooned over Gollum, walking trees and draw-dropping battles, we missed arguably the most convincing, and let's admit it, bewildering, special effect of all, making your tallest actor look the shortest. The way they fooled us was ingenious. They sometimes used scale doubles to play the actors so that they could get the correct proportional height of each character. In the novel, dwarves are slightly taller than hobbits, so they used two scale sets instead of three by casting taller than average actors like Reese Davis, to play dwarves, then combine dwarves and hobbits into one size scale. They also ingeniously used forced perspective on a level never seen before in the film industry. Number 7. Proof that contemporary art isn't worth all it's made out to be. 90% of contemporary art is a crook. Most people would agree with that. Others would say that 99% of it is a crook. Scottish author William Boyd, presumably tiring of people claiming that unmade beds or the act of turning a light switch on or off were acts of genius equivalent to the oeuvre of Da Vinci or Michelangelo, devised a cunning ploy to catch out the art world. He wrote a biography of a fictional artist called Nat Tate and launched the book at a commemoration of Tate's work with luminaries like David Bowie and Gore Vidal, attending to add credence to the Nat Tate story. As well-paid art critics lined up to reminisce about Tate's neglected genius and his influential artworks, which were actually sketched by Boyd, the hoax was revealed and the art world was forced, briefly, to look its own absurdity in the face. Their faces must have been a picture. Number 6. Earwigs want nothing to do with your ears. Earwigs. We shudder at the thought. Creepy crawlies who want to slide into your ears and lay their eggs there, so their next generation can taunt you from birth. Some have even suggested that the critters can burrow through your brain. 
that's nasty stuff, but fortunately fictional. It's true that earwigs have been found in human ears, but they have no more inclination to crawl in there than any other insect or arachnid that has mistaken the dark warmth of a human ear for a hiding place. In fact, the natural habitat of earwigs is moist, rotting wood. Perhaps that explains why they are attached to some people's heads. A quick language check identifies how common the earwig misconception is. The French translation of an earwig means ear piercer. From German, they translate to earworm, and the Russians go for ear turner. Next time you see someone French, German, or Russian, remind them that they're just as wrong as us. So, how did it get its name? Well, entomologists suggest that the origin of the name is a reference to the appearance of the hind wings, which are unique and distinctive among insects, and resemble a human ear when unfolded. Number five, Napoleon syndrome means average height. Poor Napoleon, the legendary strategist and conqueror, was one of the most powerful and influential men of his time, but is now a byword for male height insecurity, so-called Napoleon syndrome. It turns out, however, that Napoleon wasn't even small. Though listed as slightly short, 5 foot 2 by French sources, it turns out that the equivalent height in English is a healthier 5 foot 7. By coincidence, exactly the height of the average Frenchman during Napoleon's reign. Napoleon's nickname, the Little Corporal, may be partially responsible for the myth, but historians consider it a term of affection by his contemporaries, rather than the insult it has become. It has also been hypothesized that because Napoleon surrounded himself with the biggest, toughest guards around, he would have obviously appeared small in comparison. Next time someone claims you have Napoleon syndrome, take pleasure in putting them right. Number four. The dinosaurs were, more accurately, killed by bad luck. Anyone who watched Jurassic Park knows that it must have taken something serious to wipe the dinosaurs out. A nine mile wide asteroid sounds like it might have been able to do the job, but when is life ever as simple as that? Two recent studies suggest it was something far more profound that killed the dinos. Bad luck. Dr. Steve Brusett of Edinburgh University published an article in the journal Biological Reviews claiming that it was colossal bad luck that wiped out the dinosaurs. With the meteor strike arriving at a time when sea level rises and volcanic activity created a perfect storm, Brusat claimed that if the asteroid had struck a few million years later or earlier, the dinosaurs would have survived the impact, while an even newer study claims that if the meteor had struck just 30 seconds earlier, they would have survived. The meteor struck an area of the seabed where there happens to be a high concentration of sulphur, which was thrown into the air and blocked out sunlight, the ultimate cause of the dinosaur's demise. Had it struck elsewhere, the dinos could have made it through, and if they had, mammals would have never achieved the dominance that has led to human supremacy, meaning you wouldn't be watching this video right now. Number three, the sun is not yellow. Some things you really take for granted. The sea is blue, the grass is green, the sun is yellow, or maybe orange, perhaps with a bit of red, but certainly a warm colour. All wrong. Actually, the sun is white, so scientists say, and who can argue with them? Support for the scientists' apparently outlandish claims come from pictures of the sun taken in space, where it does appear to be a perfect white. It's the interaction of sunlight with the Earth's atmosphere that makes it appear yellow, orange or red to us. These wavelengths of light are less easily dispersed by the Earth's atmosphere than the other colours in the spectrum, blue, indigo and violet. So are the colours our eyes pick out when we look upwards. The reason the sun can appear reddish at dawn is because the sun is closer to the horizon of the Earth at this time and even more blue light is deflected away. It seems you can't even trust your eyes in this world. Number two. Eve didn't necessarily eat an apple. When I say Eve, you say apple, or maybe Adam, but the other A word isn't far away. Poor Eve has a lot of weight to carry on her shoulders. In our day of Haribo's, cheesecakes, and triple chocolate muffins, an apple seems even less worth the price of casting humanity out of the Garden of Eden and into the big bad world as we know it. It has been pointed out, however, that nowhere in the Bible does it specify that Eve actually ate an apple. Rather, the exact quote makes reference to a forbidden fruit. Who's to say Eve didn't have a tangerine or a grape? Surely a perfectly moist peach or a sweet slab of melon is more worth the price of eternal damnation than a Granny Smith? 
Milton's influential poem, Paradise Lost, is cited by many as the reason we believe Eve ate an apple, as this is the fruit featured in the poem, but it isn't necessarily the fruit in the Bible. Number 1. Count Dracula's Wanted Poster Movies have the power to shape our worldview and impact images in our minds. When you close your eyes and picture Count Dracula, it seems inevitable that a black and white image of a pallid man with dark hair, a widow's peak, a cape, and a smooth, thin face will come to mind. The face of Bella Lugosi, who played Dracula in an iconic 1931 movie. Dracula predates Lugosi, however. He originated as a titular character of Bram Stoker's novel, where he was described in some detail. Brian Joseph Davis uses police mugshot techniques to recreate images of fictional characters from their descriptions of their creators, and Stoker's Dracula looks markedly different to Lugosi. For one thing, he has white hair and a handlebar moustache. Picture that, Dracula with a biker's moustache. Your life will never be the same again. So there you have it. Which one surprised you the most? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a like and subscribe, clicking that bell icon to stay updated. Thanks for watching.